Hello and welcome back to Telecomando RC. Uh, so here today uh, we're going to talk about the servo horn for the EB410.2. Now if you have a plastic servo horn, uh, you may have stripped the horn already. Uh, I did. Uh, so then the next step is to go to a metal servo horn. Now you can go, there's some steel, there's aluminum. Uh, now the Techno servo horn is very good. It's very high quality. This is not the Techno servo horn. Uh, my shop, local shop was uh, out of it. Uh, so I actually just used this one, but I ran into trouble with this one. So let me just show you the design of this one. If you look at the servo horn, it goes up toward the front. And that's a problem because you cannot mount this at the bottom or you will hit the servo when it steers. So if you see the space between the nut and the servo, you would hit the servo. Uh, but the problem that I had, and I didn't realize it, actually a buddy of mine caught it, was uh, I had the stock length on the steering arm, this arm right here. Uh, so I had the stock length. You can see that it's now been uh, opened. So there's a greater gap right in there. And the reason why I was forced to do that is when I had the stock length, uh, I was driving the car, but I couldn't really steer, uh, which was kind of funny because every time I turned right, I was good. So if I went right, everything was perfect. If I went left, I could not take a left turn to save my life. I mean, this buggy, I could not use this at NASCAR. Uh, but a buddy of mine, uh, he was that, you know, saving extra set of eyes uh, that looked at my car and realized that whenever I turned left, this would actually hit in there. Uh, let me just turn right uh, so you can see. So right in there, it would hit that little arc there and that was preventing it from turning all the way left to the point where I had quite a gap. It was probably, I would say about a four or five centimeter gap that my wheels were not turning. Uh, they were probably about here instead of being all the way. Uh, actually, I have to see. Yeah, I think, yeah, right about there. Uh, so this car couldn't turn at all and I couldn't figure it out. So if you're having issues with your EB4 10.2 and you're having trouble turning left, check your servo horn, check the arm. The easy fix, if you don't have another horn, just do what I did. I popped this right off and I extended it. But today I am actually going to replace it with another servo horn. Now they didn't have the techno horn. I wish they had the techno horn, uh, but they had this horn here, which is made by uh, Reedy Power. Uh, this is the closest thing they had uh, to a flat servo horn. So we're going to try this out, uh, see if it fits, it should fit, and then I'll give you my opinions on it. So that being said, let's take a quick break. We're going to wrench. All right, so I took the servo horn out uh, so you can actually take a better look at it. So you see how it sort of goes up. That's the problem. This needs to be flat. Uh, this other horn over here, this is the one I'm going to be using. This one's going to go, uh, install a lot lower. So I'm going to see if it works. Uh, the teeth are actually here at the bottom, uh, not the top. So this will sit like this and that should lower everything and uh, we will install it and see we may need a little spacer here to keep this ball at the same height if it does lower a bit it'll just make the arm a little straighter i don't think it'll affect steering uh, as far as length uh, we have the bottom hole although if i go to the top one it'll probably work because this is pretty short and to be honest uh, when I turn right, I have it at, I have it really high in my transmitter. I think it's 118% and left, I'm pretty high up there too. It might be 115, 117%. Uh, so my servo is definitely having to turn this one quite a bit. So I'm probably going to go into the outer hole. Uh, well, let's go ahead and try it. Quick break for wrenching. So I just uh, set this here and you see that little cutout that Techno makes? So this servo horn is going to fit 
Uh, now the way this one works is there's actually a screw. So this screw goes here on the side and that's what locks it in place. So this is called a clamping servo horn because it works as a clamp, it clamps on. It is a 25 tooth uh, horn, but it has that little screw so that it clamps on. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrench again. And one of the things I like about these uh, E-Read E uh, is uh, they do come with all the hardware and the screws, but they also come with that little star lock washer there uh, so that the screw doesn't back out. So that's pretty nice. But if you look at this now, see it can turn all the way and then it can turn all the way to the opposite side without hitting that part there. Uh, so I'm pretty happy. So now we just need to install the ball. And one of the nice things uh, I won't have to worry about is uh, because I'm using the outer hole, uh, I can go ahead and put the nut, I mean there it said it's maximum position, so I can use the nut that's going to go down here and it will not hit the servo uh, because I'm using the outer hole versus the inner hole. So this is actually, the longer one is the correct size. So we are just going to go ahead and finish this up. Now I'm holding it toward the left because I'm, I'm screwing on, so I'm going right, so I don't want to be moving the servo more than I have to. And then just, once it's uh, snug in there, do not over tighten. You can break this or ruin the uh, threads on the either the horn or that part. Either way, you don't want to mess up your parts. The other thing too now is now we have to take this arm and we have to shorten it back to uh, the correct specs, which is about a millimeter. I'm a, I have the manual, so I'll double check and let you know. And here we go. So it should be about uh, three millimeters according to the manual. You can find this on page 22. So that's the actual length. And for those of you that uh, do not have the correct horn and you have something like this, because that's all you had to work with when you strip the plastic one, uh, right now, this is at about uh, six millimeters, so it's twice the length. So you're gonna have to do about twice. And it'll work. I mean, it'll run very, very well. But like I said, uh, because I have my transmitter at about 118% for steering one direction and pretty high in the other, I'd rather just change the servo horn and not deal with that problem. Uh, so for this, you just have to turn and assuming you've built your kit, you've already done this before. And again, the other thing that you could do is you could always just grab two wrenches, just stick them in there and then just turn them. It's a lot easier. Uh, just depends on what you would like to do. Now I'm going to confirm the measurement. And uh, another thing to remember is remember to keep the T on top. So the T goes on top and then this goes on top. So the orientation is important because of the way uh, these are made. So if you look at the top here, see how that is smaller? This is larger. This is where that goes in. This is the top portion, so the T goes on top. The T here should go backwards toward the rear of the car. The part without the T, notice that is larger, that goes toward the front of the car because this is what goes into that other ball. So keep the orientation, that is very important. And this one here is three millimeters. All right, three millimeters. So we are gonna go ahead and install this. And for this, you can just use pliers or whatever you have handy, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my pliers. use the larger ones but that's fine all right there we go and that's it should go in smoothly then we'll go over here and do the same thing just to 
tool is good enough, but it's the wrong tool for the job. And to be honest, it would just be an extra feet and I would have the right pliers. But anyway, it works. Uh, well, uh, because I actually changed everything, now I have to pop this guy out and I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it in the servo. But that I'm gonna do on my own. Right now, it's just the installation. So this now steers freely without binding, which is the important part. Uh, so if you see that, it goes in there and it does not hit anything. So there's no binding at all of the steering. So again, all that I have to do now is adjust my servo and servo horn, and that's about it. But the installation is complete. So again, if you are having trouble steering left, left, it's because your arm is hitting that little arc. Notice you can see daylight now, uh, so it's no longer hitting. And that's the fix. So again, I uh, do get the uh, Techno servo horn for the EB410, EB410.2, but if your shop is out, which was the case with uh, my local shop, uh, you can pick up one of these uh, Reedy Power 271-23 Reedy Aluminum Clamping Servo Horn. And I've used these before. They're very good quality, very good. Uh, you do have those two holes. Make sure you go on the outer hole. You want the longer arm. And they run about $16, which is normal for aluminum servo horns. Uh, that being said, thank you for watching Telecomando RC. Please like, subscribe, share, and I will see you in the next video. Be good.